Welcome to another video from Dr. Lock. So in this video, we're actually going to crack, break down, backwards engineer a masking system on a building. Many locksmiths say it can't be done. I need the charts, I need this. And this simple video just goes through and shows you what is available, what can be done, and how simple it is if you're actually willing to try and put in the effort. A lot of people actually do have these skills, but when they get to a job, they throw their hands up and they're like, ah, oh, I can't do it. So this is for those people who actually enjoy their job or actually have some pride in their work and enjoy actual, actually backwards engineering or hacking or cracking. There's so many lock lovers out there, locksmiths, or people who do get that joy out of this job and um, this video is for them. Maybe it might give them a little bit of insight, maybe it might be for other people around the world who, who might not be familiar with this type of technique. Anyway, leave your comments after the video. Here on the bench because each one of these pins, if I lose one, the whole, the whole game's over. So this is only possible if I get every single part in the correct position. All right, so I've got a key to um, pull it apart here, and I've got a cradle. Okay, I'll just get it in my cradle. Okay, that, that can be my cradle. I need that to actually sit properly. I'm going to sit it about, about there. Yeah, here we go. All right, so now, and this key doesn't even work properly. Now I'm using my thickest follower I've got to make sure that no bottom pins move. Okay, so there is what I've got, my, the combination I've got with my key. Okay, I'm going to put that aside. Make sure we don't lose that. Now I'm going to go through and I'm going to find all the combinations. So what I've got here is I've got my little chart and I'm going to go through the actual first chamber using tweezers and I'm going to see what I can come up with here. Okay, I have one pin and I can tell by the color of it, it's a two. And then I have a driver pin. Okay, so I'm going to take him out and put him there and I'm going to put my driver pin there. And although we haven't uh, come up with too much so far, I'm going to write it down. So the first one is, um, uh, I'm just doing it here, is a two. And then I'm going to come along here. And here's our top pin here, by the way, TP, which is really just a driver pin. Now I have to take my plug and I have to work out what that is. So I'm just tapping it very lightly. And I've got another two. So I'm going to put them in order over here. And I'm going to do that again. And I've got another two. I'm going to do that again. And I have a bottom pin. Now I can tell by the color of that, that's a one. So now we're getting to the combination. What we're trying to find is the lowest one. So we've got a two, a two, a two, and a one. This is our first chamber here. Okay, let's find our second chamber now. So I'll, I'll start from the top again. And once again, I have a two. I have a two and a driver. Oop, we've just lost uh, lost our third one. That's a problem when you pull it too hard, you can have troubles. All right, so I remember I had a two and a, a two and a driver, and then in this one here we've got a two and another two. And a spring, we'll take that spring out too. Okay, but now it's starting to get a little bit messy. I'm just checking that we're all there. Okay, so on chamber two, um, we have top pin, we have a two, and on chamber three, we have top pin, we have two, and we have another two. So before we get all confused and all, let's keep it onto chamber two at the moment, because this is where stuff kind of goes pear-shaped. One, two, uh, we have a two, we have another two, and we can tell by the color because they are, they are actually um, red. We have another two. We have a driver pin, which looks to be a zero. Okay, so one, two, three, four. Two, three, four, four, four two pins. And now we're just gonna confirm that that is a zero pin. Is that a zero pin or a one pin? I'm just gonna double check. Because it's a bit iffy on the color. That's a zero, that's a one. If the color was good to me, I could just tell exactly what it was, but it's not. Okay, I'm gonna go for a zero here. The other way you can do it is you can also measure it too. 
no, no reason why you can't uh, measure it. So let's put it on millimeters. We take our pin, which we know it is, and we just measure it. That's going to be the more accurate way. Mm -hmm. It's going to be difficult for me, isn't it? Okay, just measure it. Okay, 3.77. Four point seventeen is a one, and a zero is three point seven seven. Sorry, a zero. A zero is three point seven seven. So I'm quite happy with that. Even though the color looks like a one, it's actually a zero because the the gold and the when you have a zero pin and a one pin, they actually look kind of similar. Zero is a more of a white whitey gold, and uh, one is more of a gold. So I'm going to put a, a, a zero. I'm going to put, put it in as a zero. Okay, now we've gone for chamber three, and we've no, we've already dropped the first two top pins which are held in the chamber above. So I'm just going to see if I can drop some more. Yep, another two pins, and they're both two pins. Okay, let's measure that bottom pin once again. Three point seven seven. So once again, that is another zero in the third position. Okay, so that's a zero there. Okay, and how many bottom pins do we have here? We have four. So, sorry, four master pins. Four two master pins there. Okay, if that's making sense to you, hopefully it is. All right, now let's move on to the fourth chamber. Now I can do this without letting them all spring all over the place. So you know, I can do it like this, where I put the pick in there. And I can actually gauge on how many master pins are in there. So that one we've got another set of two. Making sure that this follower does not move and we don't lose anything that we don't want to lose. You've got to have real follower control here. All right, so I've got two twos there. So I'm going to write them down. Two and a two. Okay, let's go for the fourth chamber. And this is a six chamber, so we've got six to do. A two. Okay, and so this one is different. We don't have four bottom pins, we've only got, sorry, four master pins, we've only got three. I'm just gonna measure that bottom pin again. Okay, that's a zero. 377, 3.77, that's a zero. So I'm gonna put a zero here. We've got two at the top and one there. So three, number two master pins and a zero pin below it. Okay, so we're up to the um, uh, fifth chamber, a two pin, a two pin, and a, a driver pin. Let's see what we've got here. Probably be the same configuration as the last chamber, but we're going to check it. Okay, yep, we've got a zero. We've got a zero there, and we're going to put a two there and a two there, which is what we've got out of the actual plug. Let's see what we can get out of the housing now. I can use a, a, a pick to do this and I can actually even keep it loaded and, and count them. So I've got two two pins there and a driver. So two two pins there and a driver. I don't even need to pull them out, um, but I will. I will just so we know what we're doing. Okay, I've got, I'm, I'm holding on the last pin, so I really don't want to lose that at this stage. And those two pins have fallen into my follower. There they are. In there. So one, two, three, four. Number two pins in that position. Now I'm going to draw this out a lot neater for you at the end so you can um, understand what's going on a bit. Now I'm just going to drop that last chamber. The positioning of the master pins in this particular system aren't really a, an issue. Um, sometimes you'll have a two pin, a three pin, a five pin. But in this particular situation where so many pins are working at, you can have, um, you know, they're basically all loaded up with twos. So it's not as critical to get the two and the two and the two in order as where it can be the two, the four, the two and the one, you know, like often you have to keep them in order a lot more than we've done today. But today we've been very lucky. Now I'm just going to empty my last uh, sixth chamber and look at that. There's no master pins in the sixth chamber. It's simply just a number three pin and I can tell that by the color of it. There's the color of it. It's like a purple, small purple. All right, so here we have it. So now I've got the highest cuts possible here, which is uh, one, zero, 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 
3, which more than likely would be the master key, because you cannot have um, master cuts uh, in the actual other key combinations. And then after that, we've got all the actual change keys below it. So Okay, so we've gone over the code, we've found the master key, we've cracked their system, and we've been able to find exactly what the master key is, and if we really want to go further, we can find out what the actual individual codes for the units are. So because this is from a block of units, and it's a very simple setup system, it's more of a Maison key system than a master key system, which means everything has to work this cylinder. But one thing they are doing in this cylinder is giving us all the possible combinations. So here's just the first number that I've rotated through and I've come up with a few combinations. So that's pretty much just looking at one of the chambers. Okay, assuming that we're not going to be using the one, we can start to eliminate the first four numbers off that. Okay, and then you go through and you say, okay, well, we've got 3, 6, 9, 12, 12 numbers that are possibilities in that system. Okay, so that's not so bad. Now we're starting to identify what, you know, the actual key combinations for the units are. So when a lot of people are saying, oh, look, it can't be done, I need the codes, this is where the kind of smarts comes into it. A lot of people who are trained in master key systems can do this. It does take time. Can you do it on a job site? Well, no, it's not that easy if you've got another job to, to go to and things like this. But yes, it most certainly can be done. And everything is actually right there in front of you if you take the time to look and if you know what you're looking for and what to do with it. Let's look at a little bit more here on the possible combinations. Okay, so assuming my mass is correct, which most of the time it isn't, but let's hypothetically say it was, I've calculated this to be 768 possible combinations in this key system that could most likely be used for the actual, apart from the mask key, be used as change keys or level keys or unit front door keys. So there's 768 possible combinations. And if we were to take away the ones which are more than... Uh, sorry, yeah, more than seven cuts away from their fellow neighbouring cut, you could probably eliminate another 30% 30, 30 of those codes as well. So this is where we get into the part of hacking and cracking and uh, deciphering them and, de de uh, you know, backwards engineering somebody else's ma uh, master keying. And from there, you can actually work things out. And if you keep in mind as well that a lot of times when people are keying this up for a builder or somebody, they're going to use a very simple structure. They're going to use a very simple method. So they're going to progress continuously first chamber second chamber third chamber and that's that's where all their flaws are and that's what allows good locksmiths to be able to look at things you know decode it crack it and hack it and get out the information they want out of it so that they can do what they have to do with it and do we like to hack and crack well yeah we do whether it be a safer system a must key system being able to hack and crack people's shit that don't want us to be cracked is what a lot of us enjoy doing and that's where we come up to it. It's a lock, it's a system, it's a code combination. It's designed to keep people out. It's designed to stop people getting through. It's designed to give access, it's not give access. And this is what it's all about. So this was just primarily a small example, um, mainly used for educational purposes. I hope some of the other um, upcoming locksmiths, uh, you know, get a little bit of something out of it, or maybe some fellow locksmiths out there across the world might get a little bit of something out of it, just to show um, maybe a, another level of things that can be done. Because up until the stage, I haven't seen it done. And, um, you know, it might help out some other fellow locksmiths. This type of information, you know, really can't be used unless you're over, overly familiar with locks. I mean, I've seen some qualified locksmiths who run their own business, um, been done a four-year trade and passed another four years, eight years in the game, and still can't work this out. I've had building managers come up to me and say, Are the, uh, is, the, is the builder selling you the codes? And it's like, no. Well, and it's like, where are you getting them from? I've had a, another locksmith on site who couldn't work it out. He needs the charts. And I have to tell them, look, mate, whoever you've got, you know, I don't think they're as good as me because I, I will hack it, I'll crack it, and I'll work it out. I'll backwards engineer your whole mask key system and find out what is what. And sometimes that's what you've got to do. In this particular scenario, it was as simple as recreating a cylinder, so we didn't need to do that. But if we had to, by finding a few of the keys from different apartments and different levels and different cleaners, by decoding another couple of keys, I guarantee you I could have decoded their whole building and rewritten their master key system just by doing that. And that's what it's all about, the joy and the fun of being able to backwards engineer stuff that is designed as a security uh, device is what us locksmiths get our joy from. So this is a short video on that. Leave your comments down below. And if you've ever done this on a site, if you do do it, don't do it. Anyway, leave your comments. A big shout out to the bloke I saw at the Boom Barrier Gate. I saw a bloke today, he says, oh, are you so so? I say, yeah, how you going? Get a wave, and he says he watches the video. So that guy um, I met at the Boom Barrier Gate today. G'day, and uh, leave your comments down below. Thanks for watching.